Karen Nate. After traveling the world for four years, we're getting close to reaching our goal of visiting 100 countries. Yesterday, we arrived in our 97th country of Bangladesh, where we were picked up by our local guide, Mamoon. With only a couple hours of daylight left, we hit the streets to get a taste of the city, both literally and figuratively. This morning we're up way too early to meet back up with Mamoon who is going to take us to two of the early morning markets that happen here in Dhaka. The guy just drove up. We think he said the name of our guide and we got in the car. We are at our first stop of the day, the Flower Wholesale Market. It's only open until 8 a.m. every single morning. It's so beautiful! <laughs> and it smells fantastic. What are these called? What's the name? Everyone is so friendly. Hello. How are you? That was a great way to start the day. So many smiles. I could have stayed there for hours just watching the cast, but there's one more market we have to get to before it closes. Wow! 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 Nice to meet you. Those guys are enjoying their job. Seriously, some of the friendliest people we've ever met. I don't think we said, but you could probably guess we're at the fish market. So this is the main wholesale market in one of the most densely populated cities in the entire world. So all the fish being purchased here is like for restaurants or even to be taken out to smaller local markets around town. This is crazy. Where are they from? I'm from. Where? Bangladesh. Without a doubt, the craziest market we've ever been in. We're making a break for it. We're getting out of here. Wow! It's incredible what some of these people can carry on their heads. Never seen anything like this before. So we've walked right around the corner to the Carwin Bazaar, and this is the largest market in the entire city. Looks like it's mostly produce. So many eyes on us right now. <laughs> this is beautiful too. So many colors. Wow. Main trading center for vegetables, fish, and other all things from here delivered throughout the country. So, Mamu was just explaining to us that India quit exporting onions to Bangladesh and the price has increased 10x and so they're pretty much boycotting eating onions. One, they're too expensive but even the Prime Minister has kind of called for a boycott of not eating onions. Also, this is what happens anytime we <laughs> stop for a few seconds. We've seen at least a million people today but so far we haven't seen any other Westerners. For a little bit of a novelty, I think. But anyway. So they get paid about 50 cents for every basket that they transport from inside the market outside to whoever purchased the vegetables, fruits, whatever the produce is. In a day? In a day, uh, I don't know. Like, uh, like uh, 6 a.m. to uh, 11, they can uh, income 1,000 taka to 1,200 taka. But this is very hard one. It's not easy because heavy. Yeah. Ah. Ah. 
I'm pretty sure I just gave that guy his first high five ever. I didn't realize that that wasn't a worldwide thing. High five. Oh. Oh. <laughs> high five? Like, high five like this? Uh, it actually is uh, not covered. No one does but we just... Uh, We're introducing the high five to Bangladesh. Oh. It's happening. High five. Oh. This room is only potatoes. They're everywhere. Step to the ceiling. It's very warm and hard to breathe in the potato room. It's probably just all the dust from the dirt on the potatoes, I guess. Oh, wow. <laughs> Getting out of here. What a morning. If we didn't do anything else except for go to these three markets, Bangladesh was totally worth the trip. Totally. I mean, we had the same conversation like 500 times, but it never got old. <laughs> like, hello, and what you, country, how you, are you? You just can't appreciate how massive that market is and how chaotic it is without just standing in the middle of it. There's nothing like it. The energy there is just insane. <laughs> Okay, so I lied when I said we could leave now. The thing I actually wanted to see most in this country was people on top of trains. Before we came here, that was the only picture I had seen of Bangladesh, that and, and tigers. So we've come to the main train station. <laughs> it's not looking very crowded. Unfortunately, I guess today's considered a quiet day at the train station because everybody was inside of the trains, but Mamoon said he has some pictures. One of the most popular forms of transportation here in Dhaka are these three-wheeled rickshaws. And what's really cool is we haven't seen any two rickshaws that look exactly alike yet. They're all so unique and every single one has this beautiful artwork on it and they're all decorated with flowers and paintings. So we've just come to this slum village by the railway where they actually build these rickshaws. It's a very labor intensive process and really cool to see. So one of the interesting things we've learned since being here is that most of the people who drive the rickshaws don't actually own them. They come from smaller villages outside of the city just to earn a little money for the day and they actually rent the rickshaws. He said they rent them for around 300 taco per day and they can make up to a thousand. So coming into the city, renting a rickshaw all to make eight or eight or nine dollars in a day. Hard to imagine this life. We have made our way into the old city. The number of rickshaws have multiplied. <laughs> Apparently there aren't, well, that was a van, but we were told cars aren't allowed in this area, so Ooh. we're taking a rickshaw to the market. I can't believe we're doing this. It was uh, scary enough riding in a car. I've seen so many of these things almost get hit by a car, this, and now we're on one. This really is the way that everybody gets around here. I feel like most places where you go where you ride in these, they're just kept as like a tourist attraction. Here, it's how this everyone's getting around. And they're so pretty. <laughs> no shocks. So we've just come upstairs above one of the shops and they just have a little makeshift factory up here where they're assembling a bunch of flip-flops. One guy's screen printing, the next guy's punching the holes to put the thong through. And then the other guy's packing them up and putting them in the bag and then I guess they'll go down on the street to be sold. Normally we prefer to travel independently, but this is one of the really cool things about being with a local is getting to to come up and see, to see stuff like this because we would have never just, just gone up a random <laughs> stairwell. I am never going to look at a pair of flip-flops the same. For the rest of my life, when I buy flip-flops, I'm going to think of these guys working so hard in this little hot room, hunched over, making them from scratch. It really makes you appreciate the things that we have. They're so quick. Before we went up to that shop, we were just walking by all of these shops selling all of this stuff that just kind of looks like plastic junk. But now you know it was at least assembled by hand by somebody. So you have a little bit better appreciation for all of this stuff. I feel like I haven't been this wide-eyed walking around a place in so long. You kind of get used to some of this stuff when you travel a lot, but this... It's a human traffic jam. <laughs> it really is.
I think he's done that a few times before. So, just to give this some perspective, India is probably the craziest place we've ever been in terms of just being completely packed with people, and Bangladesh is three times more densely populated than India. the most prominent Mughal monuments in Dhaka city. This place is such an oasis in the middle of Dhaka. It's so green and there are flowers, birds are chirping, and there are just a bunch of local families and kids just hanging out in the grass. Probably the most historical monument in the whole city and we are still the only Westerners here. We are heading down to the river port for sunset. And we just got out of the car because he said it's faster if we walk. Hello. It is rush hour. This is crazy. Nice. Wow. What a view. We've just come up to the top of a mosque to get this incredible view of the sunset over the river. <laughs> All the way. <laughs> wow. You can do it from here. This has to be the best view in the city. This is incredible. And it costs 500 taka to go inside the Pink Palace, but if you come up here, have a great view for free. Today has been a huge day. So eye-opening, but it's not even close to being over yet. We are about to get on a ship that is over a hundred years old to ride overnight to a city in the south. So before this turns into an hour-long documentary on Bangladesh, we're gonna end this video here. The boat ride will be in the next one. Here we go! locals at this no point we've been deal. here for a day no matter how long you're here i don't see how you can ever get used to this no. hey. hello <laughs> 